Hi there and welcome to this video on invoicing and partial invoicing in QuickBooks Online. My name is Tom Belton and I'm a cloud accounting specialist here at PJCO Accountants. So the first thing we'll look at is normal invoicing and the easiest way to get that into QuickBooks is just by going to new and invoice here. There are alternate ways so you can go to the sales tab which is also sometimes even called invoicing on some QuickBooks packages but if we go to sales and then invoices here You'll see a list of your invoices in here normally, but right now we're being given the option to create invoice. So if I click on that, it will then bring me into a new invoice. And the best way to work through this is top to bottom, left to right. So QuickBooks is going to prompt you to fill in anything that absolutely has to be filled in to, to meet the legal requirements of an invoice. So if I start up here with my, my customer, if I put my customer name in here, if they're not currently in QuickBooks, you can add them in through this page too. So if I click add new customer, I get the option to save them just with the name or I can add optional details in here as well. So if I add an email address, so we can send this invoice off to our customer as well. I'll also put the billing address in here to make sure that we've got all of the detail that we want on our invoice. So once that's ready, we'll click save. And now that that's saved, any information you've put in that details box will pull in onto your invoice. So we want to select the invoice date, which I will leave as today. And the terms will be where you can create your payment terms. So I'm going to want this invoice paid within 30 days of the invoice due date. I'll just call the payment terms net 30. And now that I've put that in there, this due date is going to populate 30 days after this invoice date. So next thing I'm going to look at is the invoice number. And this is completely customizable. So you can add or remove anything you wanted to on here. So I'm just going to remove that one and I'll call this invoice 001. So product or service, QuickBooks does have a few set up as standard, but again, these are customizable. So if you wanted to add different um, products or services into yours, you can add them in through here or on the, you can go to sales and products and services to customize them in there. So for this invoice, I'm just going to select services and then in the description, I'm going to put in uh, the work. So if I say five days work in March 2021, I can then put the, use this quantity and rate buttons to calculate the amount for us. So if I say five days work at a rate of 500 pounds per day, we'll then get our total balance calculated for us. Quantity and rate are optional as well. So if they don't apply to you, they can be taken off of your invoices in the accounts and settings. Um, but if you wanted to use them just for your reference rather than sending them onto the customer, then you can customize the invoice template so that they show in, in here, but they don't show on your final invoice that you send out. So once I'm happy with this invoice, I could click save and send if I wanted to send it to our customer directly from here. For this invoice, I'm going to press save and close. And that will now appear in your invoices list. So you'll see up here a little summary. And up here we can see what's not due yet. So if this invoice was not paid by the due date, it would then move into the overdue section. And if I head back to the banking tab now, I know that this invoice has been paid. So this transaction here actually relates to this invoice. So sometimes you would see a match in here, um, but this might be a good example of where you need to find a match sometimes because because of the date of the payment. QuickBooks isn't finding the match for us. So if I click on the transaction and then click find match, this gives us the option to expand the date range a little more. So if I expand this date range to include to the end of May, we'll then see an invoice here. So it's, you can see QuickBooks has suggested the invoice. So if I click on one open invoice, it will apply this payment to our invoice. So if I click save there, it will move the bank transaction out of the banking tab. And if I now head back to sales and invoices, we'll see that this invoice is now showing as paid and deposited with no invoices overdue. So if I click into it again, we'll see all of the details here. So when it was opened, when it was paid and the deposit is in there as well. So that's basic invoicing. And QuickBooks also has the ability to create partial invoices based off of an estimate. So the first stage for this process would be to actually ensure that it's enabled in your QuickBooks account. So if you click on the settings cog in the top right corner and head to accounts and settings, once we're in here, if we take a look at the sales tab, progress invoicing, is already turned on in this account. So it gives you the option to create multiple partial invoices from a single estimate. 
So now that we're happy that's turned on, I can go to new in the top left corner and create an estimate. So that is the main difference between raising an invoice which you then plan to partially invoice in at future dates compared to raising a normal one. The partial invoicing will always start with an estimate. So if I put our customer in here, again, I can create new customers with different details if I wanted to. For now, I'm just going to create a customer name. I'll save them there. And I'm going to put the estimate date just back at the start of this year. So expiration dates apply to um, estimates as well if they apply to you. So you can put an exp expiration date in there. Doesn't need to be done though, so I'll leave it blank for now. Product or service, I'm going to put exactly the same. So I'm going to say quote for work in February 2021. And I'm going to say that I've done 10 days at a thousand pounds. So now that we've got that in there, this will be the estimate that can be sent directly to your client. So you can save and send directly from here as you would with an invoice. For now, I'm going to click save and close. So to find the estimate, the easiest way to do it is to come into the sales tab and go to customers. Once you're in here, you'll be able to find the customer that it relates to. So here is our estimate. And we see on the right hand side, we get the option to create invoice there. But if I click